Hi, I'm Renewable Energy Steve. If you're interested in improving your heat pump's efficiency, this video is for you. This could really change the way you think about hot water scheduling. Stick with me and I'll explain all. Let's start off by saying when you get into a routine, you don't tend to change it unless there's something that's clearly not working there. And I think hot water schedules fit into this uh, way of thinking. So typically in the past, uh, hot water has been um, produced during the night, uh, happens while you're sleeping so that it's ready for you in the morning. Uh, a lot of people like to take uh, showers first thing in the morning um, and have it ready for the day ahead. So it makes perfect sense. It's worth noting, however, that modern hot water cylinders are highly effective in retaining heat. The kind installed alongside heat pumps are estimated to lose only 5 degrees of temperature over a 24 hour time frame. And consider this, do you dilute your bath or shower with any cold water? Chances are, if you do, the temperature coming out your tap is more than sufficient in that you could probably lose a few degrees. So with that in mind, is it time for a new hot water schedule? Well, that's the one simple idea uh, I'm using now and I've found that it tends to benefit me by around 15% of efficiency in terms of hot water. This is especially relevant in late spring, through summer particularly, uh, and through to autumn, um, where hot water is going to be making up a much larger share of your heat pumps output compared to uh, in wintertime. But the premise of this really is to use physics in your favour, not against you. So let's dive into why does this work? And it comes down to the fact that gas boilers and heat pumps are totally different in the way that they generate their heat. So gas boilers, they take the fuel, which is the gas, uh, they go through a combustion process uh, to generate heat. It's all about creating the heat uh, as a result of the fuel. Uh, heat pumps, it's a totally different process. They're all about absorbing heat uh, from, uh, from the environment around them. Um, so they... Uh, then compress that via the refrigerant uh, and then transfer uh, through heat exchangers. So more than ever, if you have a heat pump, outdoor temperatures really do matter. Imagine two scenarios. Let's say you want to heat your hot water at night and the temperature outside is 8 degrees versus during the day it might be 20 degrees. Now, if we're trying to achieve a target temperature of 50 degrees, how much more energy do you think is required to compress that into uh, the 50 degrees? It needs to work that much harder. In addition to outdoor temperature, outdoor humidity is also a contributing factor to performance. When it's humid outside, it increases the amount of energy needed to really extract the heat uh, and it may require additional runtime, which affects efficiency. And when you think about when it's most humid as well, it tends to be the early hours of the morning, which is typically when people run their hot water schedules. In terms of my setup, I have a Cozy 6 heat pump. That's paired with a 180 litre hot water cylinder. And we are a family of four, two adults and two very, very young children. With that said, let's look at some results. All I've done is change my hot water to occur around 4 till 5.30, although I think it's normally done by about 10 past 5. It tends to only take about 70 minutes to uh, achieve 50 degrees, which is my target temperature. Uh, now, I've achieved uh, on one particular day, May the 1st, um, uh, a comp of uh, 3.5 from the hot water alone. Uh, we know that the heating is typically far more efficient than the hot water. Um, but over the course of that, that same week, um, the COP was 3.38. So you're looking at fairly typically for hot water alone, when it's quite warm outside, uh, well over 3.3, uh, closer to 3.4. And, and that's that's quite a typical trend uh, for when I'm, uh, I'm running it. So um, a, a decent gain of efficiency to what I had before. Um, before, it was somewhere probably around about 2.9-ish. Um, so it's definitely made a difference. So, now the big question then, will this work for you? Well, first of all, it's well advisable to have a time of use tariff. You will need a smart meter for that, 
Um, and uh, the most important thing there is to avoid uh, use of uh, peak time uh, energy. You definitely want to tailor your schedule away from that. Um, so this is uh, an example here of the uh, the cozy one that Octopus offer. Um, there is a nice, uh, there's three cheap uh, periods here. Uh, there is a nice one right in the middle there. Uh, I think that's between about one and uh, and, and four. Um, if you if you get your hot water in that zone there, um, that that fits into this uh, this tactic um, perfectly well. The next consideration, if you're fortunate enough to have one, is your battery. How can that fit in with this strategy? Um, so there's a few things to consider. Firstly, capacity. Are you going to be running out of uh, of battery power? Uh, maybe you filled up. Uh, with the, the cheap energy during the night, um, are you going to be running out of it um, by the time you come to heat your water? Ideally, um, you don't want that to happen. Um, and also, uh, maximum output. Uh, each of these uh, Tesla Powers, in this example, um, they have uh, five kilowatts uh, of output. Uh, every battery will have uh, an, a maximum amount of output. Um, if you exceed that, it will start taking uh, from the grid, and you don't want to be taking from the grid uh, peak times. Uh, so always make sure um, that, uh, that the hot water uh, doesn't come on uh, when you're doing other high load activities, such as cooking dinner. Um, and then the final thing to consider around uh, batteries is the round trip efficiency, particularly with AC coupled uh, batteries, uh, you'll find that there are efficiency losses. Um, so if you're maybe, uh, instead of taking it from the grid at a cheap time, uh, if you're storing it in a battery and then uh, trying to gain um, efficiency uh, by running the heat pump uh, hot water schedule uh, during the day, um, there are gonna be some uh, losses uh, on the battery side. So typically round trip efficiency tends to be around about 10%. So if you're gaining 15% by using this strategy, the net gain may be as low as uh, 5%. So uh, it's worth bearing that in mind too. And another thing to consider is solar generation. If you're fortunate to have uh, any of those anywhere on your property, uh, that will provide you with free energy, uh, but it's worth noting that that will be variable uh, depending on the weather. If it's a sunny day, um, you, you could well be uh, producing well in excess of what your heat pump will need um, to uh, to heat the water. Um, if it's rainy or overcast, uh, maybe not. Um, Typically, it's it's worth noting that it's going to vary depending on orientation, but uh, the, the peak uh, of solar generation tends to be around about midday. Um, so uh, potentially, you might want to uh, put your heating schedule uh, around that uh, if solar is uh, a big part uh, of your um, energy makeup. You've just heard about how I employ tactical hot water scheduling uh, to improve efficiency uh, and uh, the reasons for doing so. Uh, but what is your hot water um, strategy? How do you go about heating it? What temperature do you heat it to? Um, and are there any tricks that I don't know about? Um, uh, it's I think now more than ever, um, there's, there's new ways of doing things. Um, and, and we can definitely break from the, uh, the original uh, routine um, that we perhaps got used to uh, with our gas boilers. Uh, so let me know. Uh, I'd, I'd very much uh, love to hear uh, everyone's uh, points of views on this. I hope you found this thought provoking. If you have enjoyed this video, please give me a like. Uh, all support is uh, gratefully appreciated. Uh, and if you're interested in more videos like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel, Renewable Energy Steve. Uh, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.